Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome you to the Cintas Center here on the campus of Xavier University in Cincinnati, Ohio, for the featured bout of the evening, brought to you by About Billions Promotions and Mayweather Promotions. In association with TGB Promotions, Warriors Boxing, and Showtime. Sponsored by Corona Extra, La Cerveza Mas Fina. Tonight's action is sanctioned by the Ohio Athletic Commission. The executive director is Bernie Profato. Introducing our three judges, scoring this bout from ringside. From Cincinnati, Ohio, Robert Pope. From Youngstown, Ohio, Phil Rogers. And from Rivervale, New Jersey, Steve Weisfeld. And introducing our referee in charge of this bout, he'll be giving instructions after the introductions, Ernie Sharif. All right, fans, here we go with the main event of the evening, 10 rounds of boxing in a welterweight special attraction. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world, Live from Cincinnati, Ohio, it's showtime! <laughs> Introducing to you first on my right, he is fighting out of the red corner, wearing blue and red trunks, the colors of the world champion Chicago Cubs. Fighting out of the windy city of Chicago by way of Cicero, Illinois. He weighed in at 146 and one half pounds with a record of 18 wins, four losses and two draws. He has 11 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the gutsy world rank contender introducing Adrian El Tigre Granado. across the ring on my left, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black trunks with gold trim, fighting out of an also proudly representing Cincinnati, Ohio. He weighed in at 146 and one half pounds. His record stands at 32 wins, two losses, one no contest with 24 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the gifted former four-weight division champion of the world, introducing Adrian, the problem proner. Once again, here's our referee in charge, Ernie Sharif. Let's go. Send it rain. Let's roll. All right, fellas, you received your instructions in the dressing room. I want you to obey my commands at all times and protect yourselves at all times. Are there any questions, sir? Any questions, sir? Touch them up, go. All right. So, Granados looked away. There's the fighter and the promoter now, Adrian Broner. These two fights have been good efforts for him. Adrian Granados has five wins in a row. Not intimidated by Brun. Opening round. Granados wants to come in. Try to take things right to Broner. Broner would have the edge in hand speed, and he's known for the quick counters. Ronaldo walks directly across the ring and did not go too drunk. Right, right, right. In terms of possibly cutting the ring off. Oh, 
Notice about Broner that he is comfortable. Every punch is whizzing by him. It's an art. You have to be able to sometimes move into the direction of the punches in order to evade them. Nice uppercut by Broner scores. You're not waging the type of fight that something exciting could happen early. Keep popping the jab, popping the jab, keep working your feints, okay? All right? How you feel? Good. All right? Look here. Give my box, give my but boxing, not trying to come in there and slug with him, okay? It's still too early in the fight, you understand? But you got this route. Now you got to keep pacing him, you know? And that speed is good. But when you in there, make sure your hands are up, especially that right hand, okay? Second round action. Adrian Broner, one of the real classy guys in this business in his corner, Mike Stafford. Telling him to try to keep his head out of position so he doesn't get headbutted. Meantime, in the corner of Donato, he liked his exuberance, but thought it could be counterproductive. He just walks in on Broner. Prefer he boxes. Nice upper cut by Broner on the inside. Another good right hand from in tight. Knockouts in 24 fights. He's fighting as if the power game would be the key, but the record would suggest otherwise. But nonetheless, he is real happy to be here. He's brought a lot of spirit and vitality. Oh, 
tried to climb a right hand and just missed. Break, break, break. Step back, please. This, this, this. Stiff corner jab. Nice right hand by Granados. Tries another one, and although it landed, he was so far away, it was only a grazing shot. So, between rounds two and three, Adrian Broner is showing that he's got good counter-punching skills, and Adrian Granados has brought a lot of energy. He's making some mistakes on the inside that have been pointed out by his corner, and when he is pulling out of the clinches on the inside, he's going back a little bit too far so that he's not in punching position. He's making some Mistakes. Every time you inside, touch him downstairs. Take some deep breath. Take some deep breath. Take some deep breath. Okay. And the third round underway. Adrian Broner, Adrian Granados, coming from Cincinnati, Ohio, USA. I'm Dave Bontempo. Adrian Broner, 32 and 2, 24 knockouts and a former four division champion. Adrian Granados, 18, four and two with 11 knockouts. He's from Chicago, Illinois. And Broner is the hometown favorite in Cincinnati. Granados tried to time the right hand behind his jab. He got the jab in, but the right hand fell short. Broner just touching Granados with the jab. Broner would like Granados to be in front of him or in an angle that he can counter. Blood coming from it's like the left eye of Granados as the Broner jab has been persistent. Right, 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 right. Go hit him, Sam. Good jab by Broner right on that vulnerable area. A hook by Broner. Now the uppercut comes in. Crowd is standing. They expect something here. An opportunity for Broner. You get that good look to see how he works from tight quarters. Referee let them go as long as the hands were moving. When they got tied up. He got involved, as he does here. The corner is closing the distance. Being selective in the punches he throws. Took one from Granados. I'm 
Hazlo bien. Oh, open up. Dame la bolsa. Dame el saco. You got, yeah, listen. You got to keep your hands up when you're inside in the clinch. You understand? Well, let's take a look at these heads coming together here. Shoulder up. Direct clash of heads. Broner on Granados. Right near the area where the blood has been coming. And Granados aggressive against the ropes here, coming inside. Good work with the uppercut. And on this occasion, Broner did not take advantage of an attacking opponent. Into round four. Adrian Broner, Adrian Granados. Looping right by Granados. One thing to keep in mind when you saw that headbutt replay, we did not see an indication from the referee that the blood for Granados was caused by a butt. So if that cut would force this fight to stop, it would be a TKO based on what the referee has ruled. Renato says spent a lot of energy not in punching position. The outside being animated, the gestures, a lot of punches on the inside when they're practically in a clinch. It's the thing that can happen to a guy in his first big fight. All that exuberance. It serves you well in some areas, and it tires you in others. by Brown. For his part, Broner has been just a little bit too comfortable. Like to see him opening up more, trying to exploit more opportunities. Body shot by both. There's an example of that energy not being fully utilized by Granados. All the running here, the shuffling, you're not scoring with that. You're entertaining the crowd, but not translated. So we are through four, and there's some beautiful nighttime looks at Cincinnati and the John Roebling Suspension Bridge, a major, major marvel, architectural and civil engineering. Take a look at the view of Cincinnati going back into Covington, Kentucky, across the bridge. Come right back with that was my you buddy Frank uh -huh. Belmont and Steve. Have a step, come back. I'm saying you slipping, but come right back with some. Okay. But keep him off with your jab. Keep the distance. Reach. Remember, don't reach. You got right hand. Granado is dealing with that cut okay. on the nose. Had cuts around his eye. Fortunately, he's kept all that into perspective. Kept himself in the fight. We start round five. Adrian Broner, Adrian Granados. Good jab by Broner. 
Nice right hand by Granados. Granados attacking with the right hand. Didn't get there. And Broner likes to counter. Getting a sort of an opportunity there, which he does score with the right hand. You can see where a guy of this style, Granados has, can be a little annoying to Broner, who likes to counter. Granados circles, and when he gets out, he moves way out of punching range. Looked happy when he walked in. Looked happy in his dressing room. Looks happy in the ring. No change into business mode as we saw Broner do. Came in happy and then the game face eventually came on. Nothing on the shots of Granados. Nice uppercut greets him by Broner. Uppercut by Broner, then he just missed the hook. You know he'll go back to that sequence. Short right hand catches Granados on the way in. So Broner able to express himself in some of the subtleties that he is known for as we come up on the halfway point of the fight. Illustrating the frustration for the corner of Granados. They want him to move to avoid these shots, but this is where Broner excels. He gets you in tight, and then he goes to work. Sixth round underway, Adrian Broner, Adrian Granados, Dave Fontempo, along with right, producer right, Frank right. Belmont and the crew at Belmonte Productions. Adrian Broner, 32 and 2, 24 knockouts. Adrian Granados, 18, 4 and 2, 11 knockouts. And a telling image unfolded in round five with Granados on the inside, tiring and thus not being able to move far enough away as he had been doing earlier. And when he was unable to do that, Broner made him pay with some good inside shots. is steadily tired. Some of the body shots by Broner 
have to take credit for that. Great, great, great. As is some of the over-exuberance he had earlier in this big opportunity fight. Some frustration starting to eat in for Granado. As he's tiring, can't quite get to Brown. It's amazing what happens when you get tired. If I could be right in front of you and you can see the shot, and you load up. And it only gets halfway there. Because you just can't push it out any faster. Good action by both. And a left hook by Broner punctuates it. Little fashioned phone booth warfare. In round six. Here's Broner on the inside, dominating in this sequence. Takes a step back after he lands the body shot, and then Granados lands two good ones, as well as a good hook by Broner. So a nice exchange and good accuracy from both fighters. There's that Broner uppercut. We saw that in some earlier highlights, how he leaned into it and got everything behind it. Yeah. Keep that heat on his ass, you hear me? Let's go. Round seven. Adrian Broner is greeted by Adrian Granados, who comes right to him. This is where the significance of the referee comes in. Ernie Sharif. How much will he let them fight on the inside? <laughs> now, if you're Granados, you take a look. That's the third straight right hand that came behind the jab. And earlier, that punch was a split second faster. And it got home. Great, great. Now that's four in a row that just didn't quite get to grow. That's part of the attrition that goes on in a fight. And how the fatigue factor has an effect on time. All the movement here by Granados is not moving him closer to the target. Moving outside, moving left, moving right. He's got the ability to move on angles, but he would like to be moving on angles at about half the distance that he's been doing it at. Too far away. Nice body shot by Broner behind the jab. And that uppercut has been good in tight. 
reason Granados is still there is that Broner has not put punches together. He has had some very good one-punch efficiency, but not combinations. Chasing down now, he's got the positioning in the final few seconds of round seven. Cincinnati has always been a great place for us to come. The Tyler Davidson Fountain in Cincinnati, one of the great landmarks in this city, along with some uh, nice restaurants, some ballparks, and of course, uh, fight center. Pretty sight. Tough on the family. It's tough to watch your son fight. Adrian Granados' mom is a trooper. Into the eighth round we go. Adrian Granados has put up a good account for himself in trying to bring this fight to Adrian Brown. but against a four division champion and a veteran of many high profile fights. Renato says, had difficulty, but he keeps coming, keeps trying. That's a nice right hand. Granado says, you want to put up very good spirited effort, especially against the guy you're fighting who is now promoting. Just get more friends to lobby to. More openings for other fights. So it is refreshing to bring a spirited personality into this type of an event. The difference for him is some of his right hands he's missing Broner with connected on other fighters. Now you get into a situation like this where your punch percentage is off, you're just missing. You're getting caught for every mistake. Broner tried to get that uppercut scoring when he was going backward. That one did not get in, but the follow-up right hand did. Everything, okay? Everything, bro. 
Okay. But breathe, 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 breathe. Come on. Mike Stafford warning Broner about that. Right hand by Granados. And Mike Stafford's biggest concern is the headbutt. Broner landed his right to punctuate the exchange. And that's why you keep punching. The last shot in that sequence got in. Come on, come on, you're doing good. When you hit it 10 seconds, do the same thing again. You got it? Seconds out. Let's go. Come on, come on, Bobo, Bobo. Ninth round, Adrian Broner. Has done pretty much what he wants, when he wants against a feisty Adrian Granados. But does he want to do something memorable in this fight? Question. Good right hand there by Broner. Coming in here on a five fight win streak. Now in serious jeopardy. These guys are welterweights, but pretty close to middleweights now. Putting on a neighborhood of 10 pounds between the weigh-in yesterday and tonight. With the Granados, the lesson going forward, can he find a way to keep this energy and sit down on his punches. Broner's combinations usually come in the countering mode. There he got it off on the lead end, and then a nice tight right hand that came through the defenses of Granadas. The heads came together again, but fortunately, no cuts. The Broner left hook the came close. Boxing, okay? You gotta stay on the outside, one, two, one, two, and throw the right hand. And then she shorten up the uppercut, okay? All right, stay away from me. Keep your distance, all right? Let's go, man, come on. He's trying, he trying you out, trying to rest you. Stay in his ass. You got it? Make him work and keep your head moving. Let's go. Final round action, Adrian Broner and Adrian Granados will tie up, tap up, and then they'll go. Broner told to stay outside by Mike Stafford, but he may want to 
unload some energy here in round 12. Tape on the glove. Just cut it, just cut it. What I pulled over there. Time in. Box. Oh. So give Granados a little extra time, and you know he'll come flying across the ring. Warner has done what he's needed to in this fight. Not really much more. But one thing that he has done, nicely, he hasn't had any theatrics in the ring, no low blows, no demonstrative expressions that have hurt him from an image standpoint in some other fights. He's talked about maturity and having children. And this is the time in his career now where that opportunity to prove that is here. Don't touch him in. He's a big professional. Good shove by Ernie Sharif. The first time Brunner has been pushed back. At anywhere from a three to a five to one favorite throughout the week. And this is what a three to one favorite looks like in the ring. Calm, composed, asserting his class edge. And Granados hustled enough. So that both fighters look good enough to this crowd. They get a warm reception at the conclusion. To neighborhoods and fights, he'll be the kind of guy that can sell tickets, bring people out. Love you, Adrian. Love you. the war. There's Broner on the outside on the left of your screen. It's Granados. They exchange the blows. The left hook by Broner. The right hand by Granados. Broner on the inside in close. I talked about that uppercut tonight. He loves that shot in there. We saw it on some of the highlights either. Now the Broner combination in tight. Good uppercut. Nice two shots in there as he maintains his leverage and balance on the inside. Good inside work for Broner when the opportunities presented themselves. Pain in that left hand. Let me He's tired. Nobody in the Broner camp. Looks like they're expressing any concern. Get these off of me. 
He looks a little gassed. Let's get the final numbers. Ladies and gentlemen, after 10 rounds of action, we go to the scorecards. Judge at ringside, Steve Weisfeld, scores about 97 to 93 in favor of Adrian Broner. <laughs> Judge at ringside, Phil Rogers, sees about 97 93 for Adrian Granados. And Robert Pope scores about 96 to 94 in favor of the winner by split decision, Adrian the Problem Broner. He did have some problem on those scorecards. 97-93 is about where I saw it in favor of Broner. 97-93 the other way. Hard to explain that one. 96-94 for Broner. Granados, that's it. After the first one, do it again then. Come on. 